think if you were, Hops. you know, if you were a Trappist brewery that was working with a strain that they had been working with for however long, and it did not have a lot of spiciness to it, that maybe that would be the reason why they might add some spices into it to well, give it that. That, that type of flavor. I think the style itself, and with the alcohol content and the uh, the the minimal amount of flavor contribution from the malts, and then exactly what if you know what you're getting from the yeast, it lends itself to adding some sort of characteristic to it. It just no longer sits in the exact triple range after the fact. It becomes something else when you start adding some other kind of flavor character into it, like a, uh, like a larger amount that dominates that malt and, and, and yeast profile, the hop character and whatnot. If it sits above that, I don't know if it should sit in triple so much anymore. It's more of a specialty of some kind. And the, you know? this, is, this is what I really like about how the Belgians um, brew. And I think that we take a lot of influence from that as as American brewers, and it's it's the fact that you'll make something and like oh, this is our triple, right? You know, or this is our IPA, you know, or this is our whatever. And the truth is, I I believe that over time we've accepted the historic examples for what they are because they they're so similar in in ways and notes, right? And so and so then that formed the style and as we reinterpret those things um today we're we're still trying to find you know like our notes that's still going to be in, in style i i believe outside of dryness on a triple i believe that a triple should still be delicate right know? and um and that's that's one of the reasons why in home brewing a bunch of triples and then still still not being able to get it right make a really good Belgian golden strong, you know, but <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a triple unless it had a particular note, you know, the delicate nature is, is definitely, Absolutely. that definitely distinguishes, distinguishes itself from the golden strong, which has a heavier hand. Absolutely. You know? And I think that it's, it's still very, very, very yeast driven, you know, mm -hmm. cause, yeah. cause you can, you can pull down these really great yeast strands from, from Y yeast and white labs and BSI and, and all of these yeast companies. Right. And they claim to be the exact same yeast that came out of a bottle, you know, and then and then you brew with them and your beer tastes nothing like it, which right. is a good well, thing. You know, you know, you Kevin know? from Fermentus will, will tell you that you're not brewing under the same conditions that they are. Your pitch rates could be different. Your oxygenation could be different. Your temperatures could be different. And that can vastly affect the flow. You may be using the exact same strain, but you can get 10 different results out of the same strain based on the conditions that you fermented in too. So it's yeah. don't you don't expect to say, Oh, well I'm using this strain, it should come out exactly like this. This it's a lot more nuanced and, mm -hmm. and complicated than that. You actually I think. touched on exactly what I was gonna ask about was even though you're using exactly the same yeast strain, the temperature differences and the floral differences and the you know, your water additions are going to be a little bit different from what the source strain is and what the source is used to ingesting, so it's going to come out a little different, so it's going to change the flavors and the floral notes. I, I also think that here in America, we're much more hung up on putting a label on something, mm -hmm. where, you know, in in Belgium, they're not, they're not saying, okay, this is a triple, I'm going to brew it to that. They're saying, like you said, this is our triple. This is our yeah. triple. This is our triple, yeah, that that's... Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any other country in the world that is as hung up as putting on labels and categorizing things and putting them in a neat little box like we are. And not to, I'm not trying to criticize us. That's just how we are. But that's why there's going to be a pretty it's wide critical. range within this. And when you talk about Carmelite and, and that kind of thing, that you know, that's how they do it. You know, they've been doing it for a long time. They've been doing it before everybody decided to say, well, a triple has to be this. You yeah. know, and I've I've scratched the surface on on this for for a while, and um, what I think what I'm finding is the Trappist monks they simply don't talk about their yeast handling techniques. Mm -hmm. That I think that's what really kind of divides and conquers the difference between these beers is because they're not telling each other how they're handling their yeast. You know, and and a classic, well known example of that would be. Um, the differences between, say, ABT 12 and, and um, Westie, Westie. Mm -hmm. you know, known to be the same beer, but vastly different beers, vastly different water profiles. And um, they've, they've also shifted um, yeast strands. So it's, it's interesting 
to to hear us hear us talk about a, a, an elusive style like this and and try to figure it out of, of sorts. And, and that's got to be really the the heart of this style too, because the recipes are very very basic. Yes, you know you're not talking about any hot flavor to speak of. There may be a little bit that plays in there in the spiciness and that kind of thing, but obviously not a hop forward beer. Uh, the the grists on them are very simple. A lot of Pilsner malt. Um, you know, I would think maybe some aromatic or something like that in there. Um, and then some sugar to help dry it out. The key to it is the yeast. And but the what about the decoction? Well, <laughs> that's a whole other debate, really. That is a whole other debate. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to open that can of worms if, if you're ready to dive in. Absolutely. It. But I think you should have another beer of sorts. Let's make this <laughs> thing serious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, I'm up for it. We What we've done here, we, we've been drinking the Marriage Zoo and also the West Mall, which I think were both outstanding. The Marriage Zoo, I could drink that all night long. I, I really like the, the heavy, spicy, phenolic note from, from the, the yeast. And both of them very highly carbonated, which I think kind of accentuates that spiciness out of there. And then we had the Le Fin de Mon, which I don't know if is that really a... It's about a triple, but it's made in Canada. Yeah, yeah. Is, it, is it really a classic example? Yeah, I would, mm-hmm. I would it's, say. It's, it's listed. Is it? It's oh, is it listed? Fin okay, okay. Yeah. I have always uh, loved that beer. I just don't know that I ever thought of it as... Why yeast even... Sure uh, enough, there it is right in the BJCP guidelines. Why yeast even banks it? Okay. And you can All even right. buy their yeast train. So we're moving on now to some local examples. So we've got Oak Highlands Brewery. Right. Here's Did one for you. Did you guys already drink the Le Fin de Mont? No, no, there's still there's some still here. Some okay. yeah, try, yeah. try the, I want um, some. Yeah. Try the Maretsu <laughs> against the Freaky Deaky. The Freaky Deaky. Try those two really close together and see what you think. I didn't like that one. Well, I've been drinking the Maret. I don't see Freaky Am I deaky. saying that wrong? Maret- I do see it. It's Maretsu. 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 Okay. I don't yes, know. That's the way I've been told you're uh, supposed to uh, pronounce it. The Freaky Deaky. But, but I'm, I'm not. Impressed not. Seuss. Yeah. <laughs> the Freaky Deaky I'm impressed with. <laughs> it's not yeah. Maritz It's Seuss. nice no. and dry. Yeah. Now put them together, though. This uh, I, Honestly, the Freaky Deaky reminds me very much of the Maretsu, except for it's a more bitter version. There's there's like something that's there's sits longer. There's not nearly as much longer. spicy phenolics from the And there's also too. a, a I mean, a ceramic difference I mean, you don't have to but, bully me into drinking the Maretsu. I'll, I'll drink it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it. Put it away. Get it away. That, from I, me. I could drink that all night long. I really like that. Are we still live? Yeah, we're still live. But the problem is, is that Facebook, uh, Facebook does not like us tonight. Yeah, it keeps well, dropping. screw Facebook. I don't like Facebook. Yeah. Uh, that's what I keep saying is Facebook is a big chode. So let let's talk about the deto- <laughs> the, the, the detoxion decoction that, that Barrett brought up. You know, decoction brewing was developed for several different reasons. In the past, one of the main reasons was they didn't have thermometers, and it was a way of step mashing and hitting certain temperatures without uh, having a thermometer to measure. And they just figured out how to do it basically. And and the the malts back then were so under modified that they needed to do an acid rest and a protein rest and a sacrification rest and that kind of thing. And so there's a pretty big debate, and, and it's one of these things where. You have people on both sides of the argument that are very, very set in their ways on it as to is decoction mashing of any use in today's environment with the highly modified malts that we've got. And meaning that the malts that we get today, the malsters are so good at at getting these things ready to brew with that most brewers will argue that all you need to do is just a sacrification rest, in, which is your conversion from starch to sugar, and that's it. And and that malt is ready to go. Boom, it's done. And others will say that you cannot duplicate the type of flavors that you get from pulling part. A decoction is when you pull part of the grist out and you boil the grain itself and then add it back into the mash which then steps the temperature up to the next step that you want it to be at. Then you pour some, pull some more out and boil it again, put it back in, it steps up to the next one. You can do, there are several different ways to do it, uh, in, depending on how many steps you want during it. So Barrett, talk about, a little bit about that, what your thoughts are on it. Oh, my, my thoughts on it um, kind of varies based on um, what, you're, what you're going after. 
Um, I do believe that you could you could build a grist to mimic some of the stuff that you would get out of decoction. Um, I'm a fan of decoction. I've always been a fan of decoction. Um, I believe that it gives you a little bit more control over the um, mallard reactions so that you, you don't have to add a toasty malt when all you really want is a little bit of candy note, right? That's what a mallard That's what a, a, a mallard reaction is when you take a, a sugar um, and then you, you heat it up so that it darkens, okay. right? Just like making candy. Candy would, would start off as, a, as a, a light straw color and then it'll move into golden move into amber, move into brown. Got so it. that's the, the mallard reaction there. And it's actually what we refer to as caramelization a lot. Mm-hmm. Caramelization we actually don't get in, in most of what we do in brewing. And that happens above 300 degrees, which we generally don't hit in anything we do. So Not on purpose either. Yeah, we, we hit Maillard reactions, which are similar, and the two are kind of somewhat interchangeable in the way people talk. Mm-hmm. Okay. And and for the for the longest time, I I I didn't know how to brew a triple, you know. So I I tried all of the triples uh, that I could find, and and I wanted to come up with my own triple, and um, and so I contacted uh, one of my buddies um, that that brews a really great triple, and I was like, look, man, I don't want to brew your beer. Let's just talk about style, and um, come to find out, he does decoction. And I was like, okay, I get it now. The decoction is is that delicate note that you're getting from the malt without having to use anything other than Pilsner malt, mm-hmm. you know. But you get some of these more Belgian candy-like notes out of it because you're actually just darkening the malt wort. You're not darkening the the grist with like a, a toasted um, crystal malt or some some other kind of malt like a like a Munich malt or something like that. So that's that's why I'm a fan of decoction. And, and well, and, and here's one of the things I, I would say that um, if you're going to try to do a decoction mash, make sure that you're getting an under modified malt because I would say ninety percent, ninety nine percent of the malts now are, are overly modified where it doesn't make any difference when you do a decoction because. Uh, <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, we're, we're carrying, uh, we're actually promoting a, a, a malt that uh, we're getting out of Germany now, and uh, it's so over modified. I mean, in, in most production breweries, want an over modified malt. They want it to where, hey, I go in and I went, boom, I hit this number or I hit this mash number, and I know I'm going to get 85% efficiency or plus. You know that and, equals and, dollars for them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, whereas a um, you know a homebrew or a true you know aficionado of the the sort or oh I want to do a decoction mash. Well, the, the funny thing was is is Barrett that I've I've tried this with some of the newer German style malts that are coming out on the on in, in the market, and I was I was doing I was just brewing straight up Belgian pilsners. And one of the things that I, I kept coming up with, I was like, man, every time I brew, I was like, holy shit, dude, this this thing is, it's way dry. There's no malt character. Uh, everything is, and I'm doing like a step mash. And the problem that I had with it is, I think a lot of times, uh, all of it was converting before I even got to the next mash or well, step. That and, that might be an argument for decoction mashing, actually, because you're not talking about recirculating it through a <laughs> coil or something and gradually moving it from one temperature to another. You're talking about taking grain out, boiling it, you get the and when you add it back yeah. in, it's immediately jumping up to that other temperature. So if you're going from, say, like 123 at a protein rest or 113, at a protein rest and trying to go to 148 for your first sacrification rest, it's going to do that instantly. It's not going to take 10 or 15 minutes of you recirculating your 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 uh, mash to get it there, where your conversion starts happening as it enters that sacrification range. So that, to me, might be an argument for a decoction. Yeah. And I think well, some of I, it I also think, has I think, to do I, with. I mean, and here's basically what I would, I would say with that: that is that most of these are so well modified now that it's tough to get to that next. I mean, 
they're converting so va- fast. I think most malts you get now, you, you could do a 30 minute mash on. Well, th- that's exactly my point is you're pulling some malt out and boiling it. And that malt, that grain that you're boiling, you're not worried about what's happening with that. It's your main grist that you're going to add it back into. And when you add it back into it, it's going to immediately jump to that temperature that you're looking for. So if you want to hit 154, you're going to jump from 113 to 154 immediately if you do it right. And there are calculators in brewing software that tells you if you want to go from this temperature to this temperature, how much of your mash to pull out and boil. And I it, correct me if I'm wrong here, Barrett, the, the principle behind this is that you're not denaturing your enzymes because you're leaving the, the liquor in the mash. You're just pulling the grain out. So when you're pulling yeah, it out, you're kind of your, draining your off the liquor. Enzymes is going to be in a, in a liquor. So, yeah. you, so really what you're, what you're pulling or you're scooping out of the mash if if you can think about it as as those um, kernels of grains, you're really just pulling that starch content yeah. out. That's that's held in the grain. That's not really going to be converted anyways. And you're heating that up. What are you doing? You're just doing a cereal proce- process on right. those starches to get them out. Yeah, you're actually gelatinizing the starches that are in there and making them more available for the enzymes. And when you hit that temperature, boom, they're ready to go. Yeah. That's one of the other things that uh, we've got on the table here communities triple which i think is just an excellent triple and uh i've talked jamie came and did jamie what's his name fuller Fulton. Jamie Fulton. Fuller? Fulton. fulton that's right yeah he's uh, a great came, brewer yeah great brewer he's come and done a couple presentations at our homebrew club meetings and uh he talked about high gravity brewing and and step mashing in regards to high gravity when you're getting into that 10 to 12 percent range one of the things that he suggested is that uh, one of the things you want to do is mash real low because you yeah. need very, very fermentable wort because you're only going to get a certain amount of attenuation out of your yeast. So you're going to mash in that 145, 147 range around there and then step up to 155 for the last 10 or 15 minutes of your mash. And what that does is gelatinize those starches and your your beta analyze enzymes are still working and able to fully convert everything that's in there. And, and doing that like... 146 to 155 and then do the mash out helps you get very very fermentable wort and i've done that in a lot of beers and i think that that's something that would apply very well to a beer like a triple where you're trying to really really make it just as fermentable as possible and uh, well i I can tell you from my experience and and i've done really well with this particular style in competition is that a lot of times i'll start in i won't do a decoction but i'll do a long step mash and i'll start in at like 98 degrees and slowly ramp it up over maybe an hour hour and a half uh to to mash out and i've done extremely well with that so Mm -hmm. yeah i I want to talk about that for for a little bit because you know like below below say 120 uh, what you're really pulling out is free amino nitrates right and though those are going to be like your micronutrients, that's also going to help your your fermentability uh, yeah. of your wort. Okay. And and once you hit about one twenty, you'll pull out precursors that that helps the the phenol notes, like the cloves and the bananas and stuff like that. The same thing with you would do with a hefeweizen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Right. It, which would be classified as an acid rest. Basically, yes, uh, yeah, but as right. rest, but you also get like uh, what is it? The poly, oh, I can't remember the damn name of the frulic acid. Is that yes. right? Is that correct? Frulic acid is yeah. produced during an acid rest, yeah. yeah. You have but, to have the right yeast pre- that can metabolize a, the frulic acid to then get the phenols that you're talking about, but right. and if these you, are yeast that can, do yeah, that. if you, if you want to accentuate. It, Accentuate, accentuate. <laughs> triples. Those, those triples are hitting yeah, now, yeah. baby. If you want to accentuate <laughs> those peppery kind of phenolic notes, accentuate, 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 <laughs> accentuate. If you want to accentuate them, yeah. No, that 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 rest can be used. That's how you say and, in California. And when you're doing uh, uh, of bites course, and beers, Jamie Stripper. Yes. Yeah. Jamie's triple is outstanding, in my opinion. I love that beer. Yeah, as as a as a brewer, I got a little crush on Jamie. 
There you go, Jamie. <laughs> I, I agree. I, I agree. Jamie actually has completely changed the way that I brew in a couple different presentations that he's given at our club. He really, really gave me a lot of great information that's helped me out a lot. And he's asked for seconds of my beer twice. So That's you know. why he's never been on our show, because I thought you might just really fillet him. Just so. fanboy on him? Yeah, I might fanboy him. <laughs> I'm not going to fillet him. No, no. It might get a little messy. Yeah. But that that being said, you know, like we 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 do like to compete as as brewers, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a worthy adversary, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So what what what? Uh, I mean, honestly, I would get the. I guess the biggest thing I would say that uh, I I guess ultimately what we're trying to get at is as as a home brewer. The biggest thing that I would say for brewing a Belgian triple is that, um, in, in, in when I, when when I when I talk about bel- brewing a Belgian triple, if you're wanting to do a award winning Belgian triple, the first thing I would think of is that uh, uh, you really got to manage your yeast properly, and when I say that is you got to pitch a huge ass starter and. Uh, there's there's a lot of different stuff that you can you can talk about as far as uh, adding your sugars because we we we've had a lot of discussion on that is you know some people say oh you can you can go in and you can add your sugar later or you add your sugar like you can feed your yeast uh, you can you know add it into the boil and and do it that way uh, th- th- there's lots of different ways that you can you can accomplish the same thing. I've been really successful just adding an end of the boil, but I put massive ass starters, dude. I mean, I hammer these things, and yeah. you guys, you guys tried all the 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 triple that I brewed this last go around, and to me, this was one of the most phenomenal beers I've ever brewed in my life. The best home brewed triple I've ever had is Stubby's triple, and and hands down. And, and one of the things that and, and how I did that is I took. You know, I went above and beyond and just built a, a massive starter. And, and I mean, I had two packs of yeast, and I did a five-liter starter. And I hammered it with oxygen before. 18 hours later, I hit it again with oxygen. Um, and, you know, so it's all about yeast preparation, I think, as far as this particular style. It really depend is dependent on your yeast. And you really got to take good care of it because I think the thing that you're going to have a problem with this as a home brewer is under pitching. Uh, it's not going to dry itself out. Yeah. It's, going to, it's, it's not going to clean itself up. You're going to have overly sweet beer if you don't prepare your yeast properly. So I think those are all things that you really have to consider when you're brewing this particular style yeah, of beer. Yeah, I agree with that. And, and you know, I, it, it is what it is. But I think, uh, to me, in my opinion, when it comes to brewing this particular style as a home brewer, you just got to throw the, the yeast brink at it, man. I mean, you just really got to mm-hmm. boom. You got to, th- and, and one of the things I do too, is I, I started out low, just like I would have a bison. I started in around a 62, uh, for 24 hours, I throw this massive starter at it and then I let it free rise after that, you know? And, and you, you may, you make a, point more to that Barrett but yeah. that's kind of what I do and, 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 it, and it makes for a fantastic triple I think I think that there are some some things about triple dope that we may be overlooking here because we we also seem to seem to be talking about the the cleaner style triples you right know? Um, and I'll, I'll bring up Adelbert's brewery down in Austin yeah. who, who really 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 focuses on on Belgian style beers and they're they're making exceptional beers yeah was there's the triple b is the triple b called? yeah yeah and i i bring that one up because it's 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 really close to say the muretsu and 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 um and some of the the super classic um belgian style triples but what we didn't say that some people are biased they don't like the those notes you know yeah um and that and that's 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 the reason why we have such distinct examples within this one particular style um because depending on your palate you may not like uh let's go back to hefeweizens here you may not like banana notes in your hefeweizen you might prefer clove clove yeah know? or you you may prefer a cleaner more 
Belgian style big golden strong ale as a triple versus a, a slightly peppery, light phenol, well made triple B from Adelbert's, you know. And going back to to this is our triple mode. Um I I would I would say if you have something that you're you're proud of as a home brewer, just take notes, you know. Put it in competition and put it in competition and change it based on your preference and um and and use the classic style to impress upon you where the style is and then make your own. Yeah, I, th- I think that's a good point. And, and, you know, I, I think that me personally, I, and I, I know you don't know me well enough to know that I'm super, I'm super sensitive phenols. So, uh, it, it was, I mean, it was a big part of my journey when it became, you know, part of my, uh, I guess journey of beer for a long time. I didn't like Belgian beers because I didn't like that clovey phenol, right? Mm-hmm. And so, I I would still say that I probably err on. And this goes for saisons. This goes for for. Um, well, your you know, your triple is is low in phenols. It is. Yeah, but but I like that. Still very well within the, the, the style the guidelines, range, so, yeah. yeah well and i'm just saying that even my hefeweizens you know uh me and nate just won a stein for it last year but uh, uh i i like more well balanced i don't want it overly spicy i don't want my saisons to be overly phenolic i don't want my i don't want my belgian triples to be overly spicy i don't want my you know, um, I, I just, I'm not a big, I mean, I'm overly sensitive to, to phenols. Mm-hmm. And as a matter of fact, when, when I taste homebrew and if, if I get a, if I get a flaw, a lot of times I get the phenols or, uh, oh, it's infected because I get the band aidy character, you know, from that, that. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, that, that, whether that makes it uh, incorrect or not, that's, that's not the question. I think it's, it's, it's whatever you prefer because but i think that y- you hit it right on the the head there barrett is that you know a lot of times that we talk about uh you know hefeweizen or saison or belgian triple is i think a lot of people it, it it it's a wide range of what people think is acceptable so it's the same thing with barbecue you know it's kind of like do i want spicy barbecue do i like bar you know do I like pork barbecue or like beef barbecue or uh, mustard yeah, based or yeah yeah, yeah. it's mm-hmm. it's Thank the you. same kind of thing uh, there's a lot of preferences there uh so i think you've got to kind of look at it as uh it, it's this is a really dynamic style and, but that's what i think makes it great mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah and I, as a homebrew i would i would say brew the small beer first and didn't and didn't make it triple for the yeast cake you know yeah that's a great and, question you know if if you're gonna try and brew this, if, and you haven't gone out and tasted the Maretsu and the West Mall and and that kind of thing, go out and buy those first. You know, get a feel for what we're talking about in terms yeah. of the dryness and and the spiciness and how that works, and have an right. idea. You know, whenever we talk about recipe formula formulation and getting into brewing a style that you're that you really want to do. We always talk about having an, a specific end result in mind before you go into designing your recipe or, 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 you know, more importantly, designing your fermentation and understanding how your yeast works and that kind of thing. So you really need to understand what the style is about before you set out to make it. And, and that means going out and drinking some good examples of it and pinpointing what it is you like about those examples. Stubby brought up a good, a good point in that he's very sensitive to phenolics. His are not very phenolic. They're not very spicy or whatever. Again, I'll go back and say the best homebrewed triple I've ever had was Stubby's. And it didn't have that. And I like <laughs> the, the phenols and the spices and that kind of thing. But, but his doesn't have that. Thing. It's a balance thing. It's a balanced thing, and it's a it's a go do something intentionally. Go work towards a goal. Everything you do should work towards a particular aspect of the of how you want the finished product to come out. And you know, think of it that way. So, so th- this is my favorite. The West Mall triple. West the West Mall. Mall. I see. I like the the Maretsu better personally. Really? Well, I understand why you don't because the Maretsu is a lot spicier. Yeah. A lot spicier. Yeah, I like the Maretsu. 
So okay. I'm a fan of the West Mall. There, there's something about the West Mall that is very difficult to achieve as a home brewer, and that's softness. Um, and softness comes from water, um, the water profile of the triple. Um, and I think that triples are, are also one of those that can, can use a little bit harder water, but when you soften it up, you, you're probably going to be targeting a more clearer example. Something that has well, in, the, the soft one, water tends to take the sharp edges off a right. little bit. The those. one thing that I, w- I will say about that I love about West Mall, and and to me that's my favorite, that's my f- favorite Belgian triple, bar none, is that I get that effervescent, soft, fluffy head. You know, this light, light bodied. I mean, it, it's to me th- this is heaven to me. I love <laughs> I love West Mall. I think it's, uh, I mean, I, I can imagine I, I would have like a spiritual experience if I actually went to West Mall. The the the. I'm never know. gonna fault a guy for loving fluffy head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Someone oh, was gonna say goodness. it. It might as well be yeah. me. No, but I mean, I, to me, the, out of all the triples that we've had tonight, this is the lightest body, easy to drink. Uh, to me, I agree with you on that point. Yeah. How many it's triples just, have you guys had tonight? A lot. Uh, More than three. <laughs> Definitely compared to the American versions, too. So. Well, and, and, and I would say this. There is not an American triple version we're going to try tonight. I don't care where it's at. It's not going to have this light-bodied... No, you're right. Fluffy. It doesn't... It's I can not, totally agree with that. I haven't it's found just, anything that compares. Yeah. It's just not... It's not the same. But I'll say I got a homebrew version that's pretty damn close. I would have to say that. <laughs> where are you stashing and these I, bottles at? Uh, <laughs> well, I, we I drink agree them all. With Barrett on that one. <laughs> no, no, I, I will vouch that I really feel like Stubby's triple is really just an outstanding beer. When I when I drank it, I, I actually stole a bottle. I think one time while I worked at the store. But all right, that's yeah, coming up it, in a beer kit, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Stubby's you know, triple. It's a it, tough it, kit to put it, out. And, and Barrett, here, here's the thing: is really, really what when when I do this, it's it's the most basic. I mean, there is nothing to it. There's no spices. There's a little bit of uh, a little bit of there's only bittering like one hops. jalapeno in the kit, <laughs> <laughs> just to throw people off. <laughs> you don't even put that. I beer. mean, honest to God, man, it, it really is the most simple beer on the planet. It's one hundred percent pills. I put a little bit of of, of you know uh, corn sugar in it, mm-hmm. and uh, it's all yeast, maybe. The I'm bottle condition. You. Yes, I am I'm a very yes. much fan of bottle conditioning. Yeah, for these, uh, I, I promise yeah. you, man. Um, all of my big Belgian beers, hell yes, I bottle. You won't get the same thing without. I'm not, you I'm just I, so. I'm, are you bottle conditioning with dextrose, corn sugar, simple sugar, uh, I, I've wort? Been, I, uh, I've are been you krausening? It was the no, ratio. No, dextrose I just been and using, corn sugar. Uh, does your does your dextrose bottles explode after six months? <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, I would I would say that I, I I mean I use just straight up corn sugar, but uh, uh, the uh, and I'm using a, a Belgian. I'm, I'm using a bottle conditioning yeast. Mm-hmm. Um, the CBC, and, yeah, the CBC one. And, and what's really funny is is I've taken this stuff and um, because I I usually set on it three or four months before I bottle Stop it. Stop caressing me in in a, in a carboy, and then I'll just take this I'll just take this CBC one this bottle conditioning use and I'll just dump it right in the carboy, and uh, um, and uh, I'll I'll just let it you know kind of do its thing, and then I'll bottle it. But most of the time. It, when I put that CBC one in the triple, it'll like climb out of there in like ten minutes. It's like just climbs out of the carboy. It's it's Nucleation it's insane. Plants. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. Yeah, but anyway, it works. It works good. And then it, it, and and believe it or not, it, <laughs> less than a week that Belgian triple is carbonated. Wow. Yeah. 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 It, cool. It's pretty awesome stuff. And and it's a really packed tight, um, you know, yeast cake at the bottom. So it, it works well, uh, I, I, but I don't know. I I I, uh, uh, I really like the last couple of times. I like the uh, what was the the yeast that I used? There? It was a uh, uh, the Belgian uh, high gravity. 
The which, trap high yeah, gravity. Trap is high gravity. That's yeah. a great that's yeast. Thirty seven really eighty seven by white. Yeah, yeah. White that's yeast. what I yeah, I use and and uh let's talk about that because um I, I actually wrote this down because we were talking about building triples and I got excited. <laughs> <laughs> so um some of my favorites for, for yeast is is just that the thirty seven eighty seven, um, the five hundred and um my my buddy who who I said you know makes one of the best triples that I, I like, he uses um five thirty, which is known to be the the West Mall. Is that WLP five thirty? Yeah. WLP yeah. Okay. Okay. Three, three five thirty. Okay. Yeah. So that's the WLP would be the um, White Labs. White Labs. White yeah. Labs. Right. that isn't that five hundred is the Abbey and right and then five thirty is the Monastery L. Yes. Or, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that not the, the is that not the Direct comparison with the the trappist high gravity. Uh, it is. I think yeah, it is the monastery saying, and the, five, yeah. the But it's it's from that. a different vendor. So right. Yeah. Well, and that's the kind of we, we've had we've had arguments about that for for many different people. It's kind of like, uh, oh, it's the same strain. No, it's not. It tastes different. Well, there's some mutations there. There's They're some, banking it, you know, yeah, differently. It's their but, strain of yeah, whatever it originally it, it, was. Yeah, but. Uh, fantastic. Uh, you know, I think those are great things to, to really consider when you're doing these style of beers is, man, you know, I love dry yeast. You you guys know I, I love dry yeast. And, but Me this too. is, this is one style that I really think requires a right. yeast starter. I agree. And that particular, right. I mean, and on the list here is Safel T58 really. and I would it, never, ever use it, that. It's, it's in the, like it's described often, but I don't really well, T58, go with that. Well, T58, here's the so. thing with T58. is it doesn't you, dry you, out. You, you'll talk to Kevin. And, and, man, I need to hook you up with Kevin. He's a he's yeah, definitely awesome dude, man. Kevin. He's, he's yeah. a great dude. Um, and, and one of the things that he told us about the T58, T58, it, I think it produces the most Belgian – you know, character of any of their yeast, nah. but it will not even, it will not ferment malta trios at all. Zero, zilts, none. So That's why you it doesn't dry out. Yeah, right. so you can't use you that can't, really you can't for make a, a triple. triple with that. No, 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 you, no can't. you can't. You cannot make a <laughs> I'm not sure with what that. style you make with T58, to be honest with you. You can make a, you can make a double or quad with that very easily. And, I, and I've won competitions with it. See, I, I, like think, I think a double style, and a quad but... need to dry out too. Well, it depends. I mean, if if you're pumping it full of sugar, you don't I really think that, need I, that. Yeah, dry except for whatever's not dry because of the specialty malts that are added to them. Right. Yeah. yeah. Which is why you can get away with twenty percent sugar. Yeah. In right. Exactly. Yeah. Beer. Right. It's because you're fermenting that sugar, and then your body is the residual right. malt. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the American versions of of doubles and triples are big and chewy. That's not how they are. I've had one yeah. that I liked well, that it, was a double. And it makes me wonder. That's when Austin uh, made it uh, over at the former brew pub that he worked at. You know, and that made me one ma- that makes me wonder if if a lot of these little brew pubs that were are breweries that we are not uh that we're tasting some of these triples and stuff, if they're not really bringing the yeast that they need to. Right. And they're just pitching some T fifty eight or something and and it, it's well, not, I it's, think it goes to that misnomer of these Belgian styles. Like, they're easy to brew. You just throw some yeast on there and just set them in a in a room, or you put them in your garage or whatever. Well, I can, disagree with that. You well, know? you can make you can make a. Uh, I think you can make a very drinkable beer. Is it going to be the style, or is it going to be as good as what you're going to get from Belgian? Hell no. Well, uh-huh. when we're talking about commercial beers and that kind of thing, we're holding those to a very high standard. I'd like to hold my beer to the same standard. You know, and and I think this idea that with Belgian yeast you can just throw it on there and put it in a room and not think about it is not correct. And then come back to it six months later. Ma- maybe you can do great. that, but you better do it with an intent. It's all about intentions and knowing what you're going to get out of it, and knowing the temperature is going to be in a range you need it to be at, and well, and, and it, your pitch rates are correct and it, all of that. I would agree with that in a hundred percent, Brandon. And one one of the things that I would say though is that. I, I think from a Belgian, I mean, from a, a beginner standpoint, I think, yeah. Well, you're these, right. These guys can do this. You're not going to be able to, you're not going to need to put it in a chest freezer. Okay. Yeah. I'll agree with that part of it. B- but but you've got to pay close attention to your pitch rates. you got to pay close attention to your strains. There's, there's a big difference between um, ordinary Belgian and a phenomenal. Exactly. Yeah. Award-winning 
Belgian beer. And and in, in, in a lot of times, I'll be honest with you, national beer judges don't know the damn difference. No, you're right. You're right. Um, and I brewed, I brewed Belgian beers and thought they were good, and then I go to the store and buy a Belgian, and I go, I'm not even in the same league. And I'm not in the same zip code. Back to the guys. drawing board. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that's, <laughs> that's part, that's of part that. of it, man, is that these – it's all about, you know, here's the thing. You, you guys have all – you all started home brewing at, at some point somewhere along your journey. And the, the, the main point is is that I think these are great – beers to start as beginner brewers because you can get a you can get you can fudge your your fermentation you can fudge some of your other stuff and you can still get a decent well drinking beer but you're in the right range yeah but if you truly want phenomenal belgian style beer you really got to do it just like you would a lager you got to pay that much attention to it you got to pay attention to your fermentation temperature and the one biggest thing that I can say, and this is with any high gravity beer, is you really got to pay attention to your yeast. That that is the that's where you get all of your flavor from. That's where you get let, all let of me, your. Let me ask you a question, Stubby. Huh? How many times did you brew that triple before you really liked it? Uh, a lot. I uh, I think that's lot. the the missing part for home brewers. You can't right. just follow Stubby's recipe. And then walk into your garage with your right. fundamental practices and brew a beer that should be great because Stubby said it's great. And right. then give Stubby a call because you literally did not brew his great, recipe. Yeah. You, brewed, you brewed your way with his instructions. Basically. Well, and that's a good point, Barrett, because I think that a lot of people, a lot of times what they do is they, uh, they brew their beer and they do their fermentation schedule or, or whatever their methods are and that's one of the things that we talk about with you know carl king you know carl they do he's a logger king you know he 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 has no problem giving you his recipes at all <laughs> but but the thing is is he knows his his procedure is is it it's it's better than most people that he's going to give the recipe to so mm -hmm. th those are all things and and the one thing that I noticed, Barrett, with this particular style, and, and I love this style. This is probably one of my top one or two, three styles. And one of the things that I really like about this, and one of the things that I learned about this, is that I couldn't pound this with enough yeast, and I couldn't pound it with enough oxygen. And, and as a matter of fact, I, uh, I hit it with O2 before, you know, and then I hit it 18 hours later, Boom! I hit it again, and I think I think that's I mean really I think that's that's a big key to this particular style. You you have to have a shitload you of oxygen. You pound it and you hit it and you, and hit you it pound and it, it and, 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 and you pound there's it a shitload. More. Let it breathe and then you pound it again. Well, I, I'm just I'm just no trying no to, you're I, you're right. I, I'm just trying to say I'm just trying to say that 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 is the key to this style. Well, and, and that goes any, to what I'm saying. That you, there's, there's, there's this belief in homebrewers that with Belgians, you can just throw some yeast in and put it in your closet and get it hot and it's going to be good and everything's okay. No, you, <laughs> no. I, I you, you, you've got to have but... a, a planned out yeast schedule. You've got to have the right amount of yeast. You've got to hit it with the oxygen correctly. You got to treat everything correctly just because you don't need to put it may necessarily put it in a chest freezer does not mean you don't need to pay attention to your fermentation. Right. Absolutely. Well, it's the same as any other beer. Pay absolute attention to what you're doing and give it the right. most proper everything that you can. Yeast, oxygen, temperature. Well, you're going to get the best version of hookers, cocaine, yeah. whatever. <laughs> you're going to give it the best version. So, I well, mean, that's the concept. And, and here's the one thing that, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm drinking this West Mall. And, and like I said, this is one of my favorite. Hookers and trap. cocaine was for Pete. Stubby's yeah. having a moment. Um, this this West Mall triple. Of one moments. of the things. I mean, it's light, but you also get an alcoholic note. I mean, it, and I don't get that with most domestic stuff. I mean, you get actual little bit of alcohol. I mean, it's like boom. It's like that's okay with me though. I like. I like no, I agree. I like yeah. that. I, I, I and, and I, I have had triples that have plenty of alcohol to them. 
Well, but, but it's maybe more like, like rubbing alcohol and it's horrible. Yeah, it's not like <laughs> it's not like a soft alcohol no you know, like I mean you get no, a I know soft, what you mean. I'm you, talking about the worst version of yeah, that. Yeah, a, a lot of them get that. fusel alcohol. Which that's is a often big difference. what can happen with the, the you know, closet fermentation that's Yeah, not you get the fusel alcohol. Yeah, right. It's not like a soft alcohol note. It's it's like boom, like oof. It's the I mean, first thing you like taste. Drinking, it's I don't want to drink whiskey. Yeah. I want to yeah. drink like a you can get a little soft alcoholic note with with the West Mall. I mean, that's perfection. They've been brewing this for millennium. So can I can I add something as a, yeah. a new well, home brewer? No. Here. Yes. <laughs> Come on, Chris. As to as FNG. a new home brewer, I can't help but think that this is when you read the history of how a Belgian is made. You think that you could just pitch it and leave it alone, right? But when you look at where they were made, they were made at a much gentler climate than we have right. here down in the south. A. So it's <laughs> more about the, the climate that it's going into, which is going to be a lot gentler on yeast and a mash and everything else. So it's as a new home brewer, I think it would be a nice thing to try and do according to a recipe, and then try and do it according to a classic style. Right. And then come back to a year later after you've been continually brewing because there's so much that goes into the yeast preparation and making actual starters because you're not doing that as right. a new yeah, brewer. Yeah, that's a very good what, point. What you're doing is you're getting, as the new brewer, you're getting, in the, you're getting up on that plateau of all Belgians, right? Mm -hmm. And you're getting within the range. And you might be making a beer that's very enjoyable, but it's not... The beer that's supposed to be, yeah. The beer that's supposed to be is the one that you have to take great care of. Just like it's your yeast a great IPA, not your work production, uh, your yeast. A very small yeah. English bitter. They are, they're still you have to take great care of it to get the best out of it, yeah. no matter what it is. But like the yeah. good thing with Belgians is that getting up on that plateau is a lot easier than some of the others. It's just it's not going to be as good as it could be mm -hmm. and that, without that care. That's why I like talking about process and intent, right. especially with Belgian style beers. Yes. Because, because process and intent really transfers. Um, I was, I was talking to the guy from um, save the world, um, David Rathkin. Right. And, um, and he, he gave a talk on high gravity beers and, um, and in, in one of his notes was, Pray for your beer, and I was like, "Okay, this is save the world." Of course, that would be in there, right? <laughs> yeah. And um, and and to me, you know, like to dumb that down for 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 the public, it would be be intentional. You know, yes. If, if you intend to make the best beer that you could possibly make, and not settle, then follow your process to a T tweak it so that you get the best product out of your small little homebrew and everything and be proud you do should it. have right, you know. an end result think in, about your process mind. yeah yes. everything's yes. thought out everything absolutely. is thought out that very, is very good go. point everything is thought out, so. absolutely all right so on that note yeah we should we i should think we should, we should we should so can up actually here. go home tonight <laughs> right, to right. This, uh... so in upcoming episodes <laughs> we'll i still got some triple over here i'm just saying <laughs> Oh, oh, we'll be drinking more of this, for sure. <laughs> In upcoming episodes, we'll be recording yeah, our Facebook okay. Live version of the show on Friday nights. We talked about that. Right. Closer to 645 or 7. A little bit, well, I, I don't know that I agree with that statement. It's written on the paper here. I'll believe it when I see Zach it. Zach will be here. Um, Maybe but, we'll do some But training. we'll have more hosts available and that kind of thing. Um, have more hoes available? Yeah, more hoes available. Yeah. Friday yeah. night. Didn't you write this? I didn't page. write this. Yes. No. That's all great. Again, make sure to check out our Patreon page, P A T R E O N dot com slash come and brew it radio to help support the show. It does not take very much to help support no, us. Not. Those multiple options. Few of you who are still listening to me, <laughs> um, as little as two dollars a month really makes a difference to us. So we, we need your help to to keep the show going. It's very expensive. Stubby has to buy like a forty thousand dollar supercomputer to yeah, make Facebook I do. work. <laughs> you sure so, that you can keep watching it. <laughs> and thanks again for listening to Come Brute Radio. Be sure to share with your friends on social media and give us some ratings on social, iTunes and Stitcher. Social media. And to send any ideas or comments to info at texasbrewinginc.com. And you can always check in on the Brew Days of the Guys at Brew Focus fo Facebook pages at Brew with Stubby, Brew with Brando, Brew with Mikey B, Brew with Pete, and Brew with Greg. 
and come and brew it. And also, thanks to Barrett Tillman for Thank coming in. Thank you very much for coming, thanks, Barrett. Barrett. Excellent. Well, Anytime you ever want to come in, do you're welcome. You're here. Absolutely. Anytime. Please. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Come and brew it. Come and brew it. Woohoo! Yeah. It's a wrap. Now for the twenty minute outro. <laughs> <laughs> Where we all just sit around and cuss. Yeah. <laughs> Whole lot of f words and. Uh, Cursing These beers are very mothers. strong. It's hard for me to ask you when you keep answering them before you can ask them. Yeah, so I'm getting a bigger <laughs> fucking computer. Fuck this thing. <laughs> Piece of shit, dude. You can do a very good <laughs> price for you, my friend. Man. Very good price. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Only problem has to be Windows based. Oh, has to be Windows yeah, based. Yeah, none of this shit will work. You know, it, honestly. That's we, because we, you're we using get, crap. All of them. Here, here's the thing: is that that we could do this what we're doing right now, and I'm paying thirty five dollars a month with these old piece of shit iPhones, or I could spend a fuck ton of money and do the live stream. <laughs> I, I mean, a like fuck ton. Because <laughs> yeah. it's not my money. Yeah. You could also do this all as a Hangouts you, broadcast. I Did don't. You see I this actually don't. But, originally but, at all. I mean, you remember when we came to yeah, MoveOn at that I'll time, we it. talked to you, and then, like, the first time that yeah. we started doing this, this was so stripped down in comparison. Like, yeah. somebody's already spent a it's, fuck ton of money in here, so it's like, well, go yeah, ahead. I mean, it, it's, it's become... It's it, but it's, just, it's, just, it's one of these things that I think that... I think for about... If we can, if we can, if we, if we can continue to do this live, make it, make, honestly, our downloaded thing is, is, is much better yeah. on live-wise. But you know, we had over 240 people on Facebook tonight. Yeah. Really? Another thing to think about, Did too, we? and yeah. I was going to put this out there. I, I just saw it today. Kept dropping? Well, yeah. Y'all seen the HA uh, survey thing? Did y'all get that in the email? I, did uh, I got an email yeah. for them. They ask you, and you go through the, well, if you go through the whole thing, at one point they ask you, where do you learn stuff about homebrewing? Mm. And they ask you questions, and they go through experimental homebrewing, philosophy, blah, blah. What other things do you listen to and whatnot? We're not on that list yet, yeah, but I put it in, and I was like, you know what? A bunch of other people might be putting that in, too. Yeah. So, what's well, funny because we well, get into the AJ, so and so if you type it in there, you got to say something like, come and brew radio, and all those other motherfuckers are a bunch of cocksuckers. <laughs> and fuck that. That's exactly what I wrote. That's exactly, <laughs> exactly what I wrote. Yeah. Yeah. you got to really go strong, dude. Yeah. You can't, <laughs> well, the thing just, is, though, the H is, the tip in there. The, you saw how much the yeah, H was tip, tipping. The whole thing. Uh, uh, we lost you know what, no, it's so. funny because we, we've, uh, I mean, well, yeah, yeah. I'll try that uh, we've got multiple missions <laughs> on, the, you know, I'm taking on. this. Listen, dude, dude at NHC said people were stopping him and asking about us. That's all you need to know. Dude. When, when we were out there in fucking San Diego three years ago, two years ago, two years ago, people were like, dude, you know, come and brew a radio podcast. That was, that was our enmity, right? When you say that? Yeah, we didn't get as much of the, dude, that we was got a it, long but we didn't get as much of like, what now? Tricky, now we got it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. No, no, actually, now we have oh, a whole listen, lot listen. more, which is no, like it go needs to be yeah, listen, we need recognized to start by the putting that in stone right the fuck now because I've got like weddings and shit. <laughs> that, yeah, fuck weddings. Well, that's what I'm saying. If I put it <laughs> yeah, in stone fuck weddings. right Those are now, the wicked weddings. weddings come up, I'll be like, well, sorry, I got other plans. Like my brother's getting married, oh, and I gotta be like, tell me, let's get married on Thursday. I'm going to fucking shit. Portland, bitch. No, my oh, wife wants to go. Oh, oh. Portland's I want to. I want to go to NHC with Brandon. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I just hope good. you guys are staying in the same room together. <laughs> no, my I'd rather have Brandon than Matt. Matt by a long shot because Matt's a runner. <laughs> did I, did I I'll be you? useful, dude. When, did I ever no, tell you Matt's about that? Matt's a of all things. I can. I can separate. He slept in fun. a bed full of dude. swag, and then he farted so much that everybody was. I was puking. <laughs> <laughs> and so we walked in. Well, I, walk can't, in like, so I can't. I can't. I can't. I never smelled a a fucking hotel room. <laughs> bad. Listen, I can't promise that that experience will be different. I can't. Man, Dude, I but I can right. tell you that when it Matt comes to work, I'll be there and I'll be sober. And you traded pants with him, Barry. Mm-hmm. 
I was trying to, was I was trying time. to pack up, dude, and we're trying to. It was, it was my so dad and I are staying at home. Uh-huh. Yeah. He is fun. My dad not a good person to spend the room and directly across with, uh, from in four days from Austin or from the way from Westlake and and him. Just just see us. We we fucking have a bro. Are we really? We are. Oh shit. Thank you, Matt. We need Chris around.